and now we have the concepts. Um, so uh, again, looking at our examples, a patient is prescribed a dose of 180 centigrade per fraction in 25 fractions and patient, patient received eight fractions um, with elapsed days of 12 days. Um, so patient received eight fractions in 12 days and then had rest days of 28 days. Um, calculate the decay in dose and the steps to overcome the deficiency in dose. So again, uh, I will emphasize here when you are uh, when the patient has a delay in treatment and we are calculating the decay of the dose, um, this will be the elapsed days and not the treatment days. It will be the elapsed days that we will be using in our equation and then the number of rest days that we will be using in our equation. And we will compare them to the dose delivered. So the total dose to the patient, uh, the plain dose was 4,500, uh, 180 times 25. And after eight treatments, um, uh, within elapsed days of eight and 28 days, uh, patient uh, uh, went for rest. So this will uh, create a 0.876 effect. So the dose will be decayed by 13.4%. If you look at this equation, it's a 13.4% decay of the dose. And uh, now when we uh, subtract that 0.8, uh, like the dose that patient was uh, received, that patient received or in, in the eight days, we think that the patient re received uh, 1,440 centigrade, but in actually because of the rest, 13.4% of that has decayed. So the actual dose that the patient has received after the patient comes back from rest will be uh, this much instead of 1440. So when we subtract our actual dose from 1440, we find out that the dose delivered to the patient is 179 and it's uh, the, the missing dose to the patient is 179. And now we have to give this 179 dose either in an additional fraction or we can deliver this dose uh, by adding small fractions to every day. Like uh, if we are delivering uh, 180, we can up it to 185, 190 every day and uh, distribute it among all the days. If a dose is of the amount of this much, I would say that it would be good to add an additional day instead of adding it to the daily. If if we if the deficiency or decay is uh, equivalent to almost our fraction, uh, which is our fractional dose 180, it's good to deliver uh, it on a separate day. Uh, sit with your physicians, um, uh, and if a physician is calculating, uh, discuss it with your colleagues in physics. Uh, have a team discussion and decide what would, what would be good for, um, uh, for adding this dose to the patient. So we discussed the effects of, uh, uh, we discussed the curve that shows the effect of the dose and beyond a certain dose effects stop happening, but below that certain dose, if we keep adding the dose, uh, uh, recall your TCP curves, if we keep adding the dose, we keep getting the effects. So uh, we, we need to deliver all the dose that, that has been planned so uh, we can do a maximum favor to the patient and we can give maximum chance to the patient so the cancerous cells die and we reach that flattened area uh, where we cannot deliver any more dose. So please make sure that you do deliver the dose that is decayed. And uh, the alpha beta concept um, that we discussed in detail. Uh, and again, if you have questions, we will discuss it again. Um, when we solve questions on this, um, here um, we will have um, an example. In this example, we will have a patient uh, who is supposed to get 200 centigrade in 25 fractions. But um, before the treatment starts, um, uh, the, upon the patient request or physician decided that we we want a fraction of 160 centigrade instead of 200 centigrade. So now how many fractions do we need to deliver? So here our concept of alpha beta decay will, uh, sorry, alpha beta, not alpha beta decay. Our co concept of alpha beta ratio will come in handy. So first uh, we have to find BED for 200 centigrade. Um, our number of fractions are 25 and dose per fraction is 200 centigrade. Alpha beta for tumors, uh, as I said, alpha beta will be 10. And the unit for alpha beta is gray because it's dose. 
BED will be 20, uh, and we are putting these numbers in our equation now. Um, BED will be 25 times 2 into 1 plus 2 by 10. This is alpha beta. This is the daily dose. Again, daily dose and number of fractions. We get a BED of 60 for 200 centigrade per fraction. Now, solving it for uh, a 160 centigrade per fraction, we just rearrange the same equation. Again, alpha beta will be 10. Uh, we are talking about tumor. Um, and BED, we just calculated was 60. And daily dose this time, we are talking about 160 because uh, we want to change the fractionation. So re when we rearrange the same equation, we leave N on one side and move everything else to the other side. We have a BED of 60 and then the new dose of 1.6 and then one is from the equation. Again, 1.6 is part of the equation, new dose and 10 is our alpha by beta. We get 32.33 by rounding it, we get 32 and treating 160 centigrade for 32 fractions will give us uh, 5,120 centigrade or 51.2 gray. So um, these were the concepts, alpha by beta ratios. Um, there can be another scenario when you want to uh, look at the dose D in the equation. If I go back to the equation. Uh, so here you can see we have uh, different variables. One is BED, we have the state equation. If you want to solve it for N, we can move this part to the left-hand side and N will be equal to BED divided by this part. If we want to solve it for D, it becomes a quadratic equation. Uh, I have not uh, touched it here, but what I will do is uh, uh, I will write this equation for you all and I will uh, in my Excel sheet also that I shared yesterday, um, I will put this uh, section also and I will uh, uh, include calculation for those and that will be the quadratic section of this equation. Now, let me try to share my Excel sheet from yesterday um, and then uh, we can have question and answers and I will show you how to solve those um, if I can find it here. <laughs> here it is. And then let me try again to share it with you guys. No, I think I opened a wrong. Um, Asad, I'm trying my best to share that with you guys, uh, but uh, I am finding some, I cannot find that area where, um, where I can share this screen. Um, let me see if I can find myself the area. It's asking me to join again uh, and sign in. Let me see if I can share. Okay, here it is. So um, I will give it a few seconds and then um, can you see the Excel sheet now? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. We can see. Okay. okay. Uh, sir, magnified so here, uh, um, magnified, um, it's on my, it's on whole screen and it's in full view. So here, um, uh, I've created these Excel sheets for you and these are locked, uh, but uh, I don't have a password for it. So you can open it, uh, but you can open it for your learning, uh, but for clinical use, uh, please do not open it because uh, when I use my own Excel sheets, I keep them locked because there is always a chance of uh, writing things in a cell that is supposed to be equation. So in this, in the green areas are input areas. You can just input uh, uh, you can input the name of your center, patient information. And then we have plain dose per fraction, number of fractions. So if I talk about the example that we discussed, let's say we had 25 number of fractions. So the plain dose will be 4,500. Then the number of treatments that were delivered were eight and the number of elapsed days was 12 and total rest days are 28. So this is the information that we will need and this Excel sheet will do the rest. It will calculate the decay factor for us. Then uh, from the delivered, it will calculate the decayed dose for us. And then it will 
give us those to be delivered. Um, in this case, it is 179 centigrade. Let me see if I can do one more thing. Uh, is it uh, good enough now? Uh, I think one of our participants said about the magnification. So, um, yes, sir, it's looking good now. It looking okay. So, in this section, we just um, enter patient information, then the dose. Uh, this is the plain dose and plain fractionation that we initially decided. Uh, then, when the patient went on break and came back, we looked at um, what what were the treatments and what were the elapsed days? So elapsed days, you all may know, but just uh, let me give an example. And as you can see, I cannot click anything because everything is locked. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I will show you how to work on that. But once uh, this Excel sheet shows you what those to be delivered, you can write your remarks here. Uh, and um, uh, in this section, you can write your remarks print it as PDF or, or if you have physical folders, print it and put it in the patient's uh, chart. So here you can write, write your remarks and physician can sign them and then the physicist who did all the calculations. Um, if you want to open it, go to the review section in your Excel sheet and click on unprotect sheet. I don't have a password uh, on this protection. So as soon as you click on unprotect sheet, now you can write it, it's unprotected. You can look at the equations and uh, you can delete and modify everything. So please, um, when you are using it for patients, uh, keep it locked. And if you uh, want to look at it, uh, uh, study it or uh, do some changes in it, unlock it, but make a copy of it, uh, then unlock it and make those changes. So let's say we have uh, Monday, then uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So the patient came Monday and we had treatment number one on Tuesday, treatment number two, then treatment number three, four, five, and then Saturday, Sunday, patient did not get any treatment. So elapsed days, most of the institutes start counting elapsed days from this day because now one day is elapsed, one day is gone when the treatment started. So our elapsed days will be one, two, three, four, five, six when the patient comes on Monday for the next treatment. So we count elapsed days like this uh, for this part of the equation where we have to write the number of elapsed days for the initial treatment. So the patient had eight treatments and then um, 12 elapsed days in our example. And when the eighth treatment happened, let's say uh, I will go to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and here is when the eighth treatment happened or according to elapsed days, it looks like it was a couple of more days, but let's say here was the eighth treatment that was happened and we have 12 elapsed days. Then patients start, stopped coming from Thursday. And after 28 days, patient appeared again on, on some day, say Wednesday or Thursday, whichever it was. So now we have, we will count our break from here to, to 28 days um, that the patient, patient was on rest. Up to here are our number of treatments and the elapsed days. So when we are putting here in the equation, um, we need here, uh, you can see we only need number of elapsed days and the rest days here. So put in these two numbers and you will get your decay factor. Uh, then talking about alpha and beta, uh, I will magnify it again. Um, so as I said, uh, I have discussed the two sections, BD is equal to um, N, uh, which is number of fractions, dose, then one plus dose into alpha or beta. And if we want to solve this equation for N, we have N is equal to BED divided by th this part of the equation, D into one plus D alpha by beta. So again, uh, in this Excel sheet, you can uh, perform the equations, perform the calculations, patient information, initial dose and number of fractions that was initially decided with alpha beta of two. You can change it to three, uh, but for tumors, we always use 10. So, um, um, then um, we have initial dose, initial number of fractionation, and we use alpha by beta, and then we enter the chain number of fractions. So here, this will calculate for you the BED for 200 centigrade, the new number of fractions, and the new total dose. 
So you can quickly, by using this Excel sheet, you can quickly calculate and uh, uh, get results. Uh, this is your new total dose, and this is your new number of fractions. And uh, this will be the BED. For patient, you need this information. This BED for, is for calculation purposes here. Again, uh, if you want to unlock it in the review here at the top, uh, if you look at the review section, unprotect sheet, it will be unprotected. Uh, you can look at the equations. If you protect sheet and uh, uh, you don't want to put any password, just say okay to it. It is protected. You cannot select any other cell, any unwanted cell, but only the green cells that need your entry. And again, at the bottom, I have included remarks section and uh, physicist name who is uh, doing the calculations. In the remarks, you can um, put remarks of uh, whatever dose was decided and then changed uh, for whatever reason. So that will be a historical record with you. If the patient comes back in the future, you will have your notes of what happened that day. Similarly, here in the remarks, you can write that the patient, uh, the treatment stopped on X day and the patient had uh, uh, y number of uh, rest days, uh, patient did not show for y number of days, and then we changed uh, or we added this much of those. So you can write these notes. Uh, uh, for me, I always, let's say I do something today on a patient and the patient comes six months later, I have forgotten everything. So if I don't have notes, uh, I don't know what I did and why I did. So it's always good to keep a record uh, so when the patient comes back and you need your record, you have everything in writing and you can refer back to it and see what happened that day when we were talking about it. So these are the two Excel sheets. Again, there is no uh, password. You can unprotect them. And if you want to protect them without password, just say, okay. Or if you want to protect them with a password, uh, let's say I enter one, it will, ask, it will ask me to reconfirm the password. When I enter one again, it will be protected with a password. The sheets that I have emailed are without password. Uh, what I will do is um, today, later today, uh, uh, I will add a section for those here also uh, in this sheet for alpha, beta. Uh, that will be a quadratic equation. I will write the equation and I will add the section for that also. And I will email it to Asad. Uh, Asad also, I did some changes uh, in, uh, those are very small changes, some mistakes that were in the initial version of the PDF, uh, PowerPoint, sorry. I will email you the PowerPoint again. So uh, kindly share that PowerPoint with the participants as well. And uh, let me tell you one thing. Um, yesterday, uh, I got requests from other countries also for this Excel sheet and I did send it. So uh, great work, my friends. Uh, it was uh, really a great uh, uh, endeavor uh, because um, uh, we got some international audience as well. And congratulations to all my friends who arranged this. And, and you are really doing a great job. I mean, uh, you are really doing those patients a favor who will benefit from all of this. Uh, thank you again. Thank you for inviting me for this talk and any questions. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Uh... No, we will take question, but uh, I advise participants to, to kindly introduce the, their self and then they can ask the, the question. Uh, oh, before we take questions, uh, I forgot one thing um, uh, to all participants. I have some alpha beta ratios for different uh, parts of the uh, body. I will include that in this uh, sheet alpha beta section. Uh, so right now, I have alpha beta values for liver, prostate, spinal cord, brain, normal tissue, kidneys, uh, different parts. But definitely, these are not for all the parts. So for those of you who are interested, uh, let's keep a record of these. And if you find uh, for some others, write those with them, share those with me. And let's, let's create a database of alpha beta ratios for all the parts of the body. Please go ahead for the questions. So uh, everyone who want to ask the question can un unmute the, their self. Uh, 